The suburban name was originally used on a series of wagons produced by the U.S. Body and Forging Company for GM, Chrysler, Nash, and Studebaker, and would continue to be used on various wagons through the 1978 Plymouth Grand Fury Suburban Wagon. But in 1933, Chevrolet introduced the limited commercial Carryall Suburban. You could already buy a wagon version of the Master Series pickup, but the Suburban was steel-bodied instead of wood. And in 1935, it would go into regular production, with GMC getting its own version in 1937. It came in both passenger and cargo versions, with optional side and rear access door or tailgate, as well as a Canopy Express with an open cargo area. Priced under $700, power came from a 3.4 liter, 207 cubic inch stove bolt straight six with 80 horsepower. The redesign for 1941 would be 2 to 4 inches longer, and weight would be up a couple hundred pounds to around 3,500. Chevrolet versions would be up to a 90 horsepower 3.5 liter, 216 cubic inch stove bolt 6, while GMC versions used a 3.7 liter, 228, with 93 horsepower. Still offered as a two-door, with your choice of side-hinged rear doors or a tailgate and hatch. Unlike most other vehicles, the Suburban continued production through the Second World War as a military vehicle. The new advanced design arrived for 1947 that included a front split bench for easier rear access, and by the early 1950s would upgrade to a bigger 3.9 liter 235 with up to 115 horsepower when equipped with the newly available automatic. But there would be a new design again for 1955 and it would include the addition of V8 engines. Initially a 4.3 liter 265 with 145 horsepower in the Chevy, and an 180 horsepower 4.7 liter 287 Pontiac engine in the GMC. The Carriage Express was no longer offered, but a wide bed pickup that shared similar suburban body panels was, called the Suburban Carrier at GMC, and the Cameo Carrier at Chevrolet. Engines would quickly get bigger, 317 cubic inches in 1956 for the GMC and 283 cubic inches in 1957 for the Chevy, when four-wheel drive would be offered for the first time as a factory-installed NAPCO kit. The wide-bed pickups would be renamed Fleet Side and Wide Side for 1958, and the trucks moved to quad headlights. But they would be restyled more fully for 1960, switching to an in-house four-wheel drive system. GMC versions would get a 5 liter, 305 cubic inch V6, and wheelbase was up an inch to 115, and overall length was 200 inches. There would also be a 6 row conversion with 4 doors on the passenger side. This series would see continuous updates, and in 1962 that included a facelift, with the Chevy version switching back to 2 headlights, and the GMC retaining 4. That was soon followed by a more conservative suspension design and new 3.8 liter 230 and 4.8 liter 292 straight sixes. 1964 would do away with the wraparound windshield and production would begin in Brazil. And 1966 would see the addition of a 4.1 liter 250 straight six and a 5.4 liter 327 V8. There would be an all new bigger Suburban for 1967 based on the long bed version of the new Action Line pickup, while the previous version continued to be manufactured in Brazil. The new version was 216 inches long on a 127 inch wheelbase, most with one door on the driver's side and two on the passenger side. It would soon see engine upgrades that included the addition of a 6.5 liter 396. The 283 was replaced by a 5 liter 307, and the 327 was replaced by a 5.7 liter 350. In 1969, a short wheelbase two-door version returned as the Blazer at Chevrolet and the Jimmy for GMC. And in 1970, the 396 would increase to a 6.6 liter 402, and it would see the end of the GMC V6. Sales would be climbing rapidly by this point, reaching 27,000 for 1972. With the new rounded line design of 1973, the Suburban became its own model line, instead of just being a CK carryall body style, although it still clearly shared its design with the pickup, and shared its trim levels, 
including Scottsdale, Silverado, and at GMC, Sierra. Now an extended four-door wagon, it was 219 inches long on 130-inch wheelbase, with weight climbing to nearly 3 tons for top versions. Differences between Chevy and GMC versions were now simply trim. Initially, engines were the 250 straight 6, 307, 350, and 7.4 liter 454 V8s, although the 307 was dropped the following year. The Brazilian version, however, carried on with little more than a facelift. Engine choices increased in 1976, adding a 5 liter 305 and 6.6 liter 400 V8, and then a 5.7 liter Oldsmobile diesel in 1978. 1980 would see the move to rectangular headlights, but it wouldn't get a facelift until the following year, when the straight 6 and 400 would be dropped, but a 4-speed automatic would become optional, and a year later it would move to a 6.2 liter Detroit diesel. 1987 added a 1-ton version, and the 350 became the base engine. In 1989 it would get its second facelift, to look more like the pickups that were redesigned the year before, when Brazil would finally move to the current model. But the Suburban would get the design of the pickup again in 1992, after nearly 20 years of only minor updates. 219 inches long on a 132-inch wheelbase, V8 engines carried over, while the diesel was up to a 6.5 liter, and a manual transmission was no longer offered. Nor was a one-ton version. Trim levels were simplified to base, LS, and LT, which in 1995, the shorter two-door versions would be renamed Tahoe for the Chevy and Yukon for the GMC, which would also be offered as four doors, still 20 inches shorter than the Suburban. Within a few years, new Vortec heads would improve V8 performance, and starting in 1998, the Suburban would make an appearance as a Holden, but it only lasted for a few years. There would be a new Suburban for 2000, of similar size and shape, but GMC dropped the name in most markets, becoming the Yukon XL, or Extra Long. Base engine was changed to a 5.3 liter, 325 cubic inch LS, with an available 6 liter, 364. The next year, an 8.1 liter, 496, and four-wheel steering became available on the heavier duty 2500. And there would be a Z71 off-road package offered, with sales of the Chevrolet exceeding 150000 2002 would see the introduction of a suburban pickup called the Avalanche, with a pass-through between the cab and the bed. Its unique styling would eventually inspire a facelift on the pickups, a facelift the suburban would only see in limited markets outside of the U.S., Soon, Cadillac would offer a version of the Suburban as the Escalade ESV and of the Avalanche as the Escalade EXT, other Escalades being on the shorter wheelbase of the Tahoe and Yukon. The interior would be upgraded in 2003 with an increase in standard features, and only LS and LT packages remained. But starting in 2005, the Z71 package would be offered on two-wheel drive models. In 2006, a special LTZ package was added to put it more in line with the luxurious Yukon Denali. But sales would begin to decline, at least in part due to increased competition. Following the release of their short wheelbase counterparts, there was a new Suburban and its variants for 2007. It was three inches longer, and it would be the first time it shared none of its styling with the pickup. More packages were offered, with more focus on luxury, including SLE, LT2, and LT3. The big 8.1 liter V8 was no longer offered, yet weight could reach as high as 6,300 pounds. 2010 would see a 75th anniversary edition, with white diamond paint and cashmere interior, as well as special chrome wheels and all the modern electronic doodads available at the time. Less than 2,600 were made. But available features would grow quickly as the Suburban began to transition from a large affordable SUV to a large luxury SUV, with even more available trim levels. When it was redesigned again for 2015, it gained another 2 inches, and was supposed to be aimed specifically at meeting public demand. Apparently this meant more features and improved mileage with less utility. 
meaning heavy-duty versions were restricted to commercial fleet sails, but weight and aerodynamics were improved. The 5.3 liter continued on, with the 6.2 liter 376 introduced in the previous Denali becoming the option. In 2017, the top-line LTZ was renamed Premier, but in spite of climbing prices, it was continued to be seen as a value. There would be another restyle in 2021, gaining nearly two more inches with a four-inch longer wheelbase. It was less truck-like with revised suspension and a lower floor pan, and a 3-liter Duramax turbo diesel 6 was added. By this point, GMC was now using the Yukon name in all markets. Prices now started around 55000 and sales were around 50000 annually. But it's unlikely the Suburban will go away anytime soon. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.